Well, hello, hello. I am Gina Zwig with Positive Life Dog Training, and you are watching Tuesday Tip. I am coming to you from my home state of Wisconsin, and it is a lovely day. Rory's just right here. He wants to say hello, too. Um, it's very windy. It's very cold out. And it's only about like 64 degrees, so it was like 40 something this morning, which is not what we're used to. Um, so today, um, we are going to be talking about long leash walks. I'm always talking about loose leash walking, probably more than you ever wanted to know. I just love teaching loose leash walking, leash manners. Um, I think it's so fun to teach dogs, and I have so much fun teaching the humans, the clients, uh, because they get to see the transformation in the dog and just see how it transformed their walks, if I dare even say their lives, because it's a real pain point when it's not going well. And so when you see improvement, it just makes a really big difference. Oh, I just want to read you. I wonder if I can get to it. I just thought of this. Um, a text a little airplane here from a client. This just makes my day every time. She says, I wanted to, okay, so we've been working with her, Roxy, um, on leash walking. It was, you know, she was really pulling on leash and um, the walks were not fun, not really even safe. And so we worked with a number of things, but mostly on that. And she said, hey, Gina, Wanted to give you a quick update on Roxy. Uh, she is doing really well since last week. We had lots of walks and she's doing so much better. It's been great because her exercise wears her out. We are even practicing side, which I will show you uh, sometime. I've been starting to teach this more and working with Rory on it. It's um, asking your dog to sit at your side and it's part of leash training. That doesn't have to be just leash training, but it's, it helps leash training a lot. And she said, when we pass people or other dogs, and she's learning pretty well, I'm excited to see where she will be when we see you next. Isn't that so sweet? It just really warms my heart. Um, I just really appreciate when clients share their progress with me and that they've been practicing. When we teach loose leash walking and leash manners, we typically, if you see the boy, he's playing with his little enrichment ball. It has treats in it. See it? And he gets them out. There's one hole. Yeah, I'm not taking it. You can play with it. Get your treats out. Um, it's usually on a four or six foot leash is what I recommend. Just like a plain, um, just a plain leash. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. But what I'm talking about today is that that walk that where your dog is really walking beside you, not in a heel, but like within the four or six feet, not pulling you along. Again, very important to have that skill. But just to say that that is not the only way to walk your dog. So we're gonna be talking about another way and something that I really enjoy, Rory really enjoys, and I've been talking to more of my clients about this and finding that they're actually mostly relieved to know that there's another way doesn't always have to be just this four or six foot leash doing these training walks, which I don't mean to make it sound terrible because it's like when you're training, it, it can feel like work because, um, you know, sometimes we're kind of undoing habits that have been going on for a while, you know, the habit of pulling or lunging at other dogs or whatever. Um, so sometimes in the process, it can feel a little bit like work. It's not just you going out for a walk, <laughs> um, but it's, it's practice. So this way of walking on a long leash is a bit of a break from that. It gives your dog a break, it gives you a break. It's just a different, a whole different way of thinking and kind of being with your dog in that setting. So just to clarify, when I say a long leash, I'm not talking about a retractable leash. Um, I'm talking about what we use and what I was going to say, what when Rory was littler, still a little bit small, but when we first got him, I really wanted to teach him, it's so windy, teach him 
the value of walking with me at my side, again, I've said this is not about the leash, but um, really worked on that before we ever put a leash on. And so most of our walk, when we finally did get to do like walks out on the road, because we did some practicing other behaviors um, and building that value for him walking at my side before even going for a walk on the leash, as I've shared before. But that was always, uh, I always use it, I prefer a six foot leash for that. So that's what we're mostly doing and I've got my training pouch on when we're in that mode, I've got my clicker. And so every time he's doing what I like, which is walking at my side and not pulling, acknowledging me, I'm clicking and treating, right? On that kind of a walk. And so we were doing mostly those kind of walks and then I would take, this is my 15 foot leash, <laughs> which is actually quite tangled right now, but it's just a, plain 15 foot leash and so it's just this like regular class a regular it's a plain handle it's very plain it was not expensive i think we got it at petco a while ago um so we were doing more of the short leash walks to build that skill and then like two or three times a week i would take him on like a trail walk with the longer leash so that he could just sniff and um, explore a bit and I didn't have to be in training mode so much it was just a bit more of a relaxing walk well it kind of morphed into that both of us preferred honey buddy that now we do more of the long leash walks this 15 foot leash in the neighborhood even so I I wasn't sure I was reluctant to do too many of those versus the short leash walks at first because I didn't want him to lose his skills. So we do still practice with that. And I don't, I'm not willing to go backwards on that at all. I really want him to have that skill and the value of us walking together, him walking with me. I don't want him to just, the idea of walking on the long leash is not for him to just forget about me and ignore me and just do his own thing. We're still walking together. He just has more freedom and he can most importantly is he can sniff to his heart's content so what we do you might think this is a little cuckoo i might have thought this at some time but in the neighborhood little mr trotty next to me i'll just show you real quick while he's right here right right so his come here, little boy his um i have his little balance harness on you see Hey, there he is. And so I clip it onto the back. So this harness also has a front clip, which I've shown you before, but I don't, never, I don't know if I ever showed it on him. And so there's also, where is it? There's a front clip. Oh, here it is. There's a front ring here. If your dog is more of a puller, I wouldn't recommend clipping it on the back, but I do clip it on the back for Rory. And so anyway, that's how we walk most often. Okay, buddy, you can go play. Go play. Um, and so in the neighborhood even, I let him go. I mean, we walk forward, um, but a lot of times he is stopping and sniffing and I, I let him. And then there are even times, this is what I think you might think is a little cuckoo. He will sometimes, but sometimes he'll just want to like lay down in the grass can you just look at this cute man? He's such a good little boy, too. Look at my son-in-law. We're staying at my daughter's. And my son-in-law made this little gate to keep Rory on the deck. And that's so sweet. Giving me peace of mind. It's not a fenced-in yard. So we're going to work on some border training, but we haven't yet. <laughs> so we just got here on Saturday. Busy, busy. Um, I'll let you know how that goes, too. So... He will just sometimes on these walks just lay in the grass and I have trained myself. So there was a time when it'd be like, oh, come on, this looks bad. Especially I'm a dog trainer. We're walking and my dog's laying in the grass. It's like, you know what? I'm going to give myself permission. I'm just sitting in the grass with him. I'll just like pat him if he wants that or just enjoy sitting on the grass for a moment. And then he just is like, or he might roll around a little bit, chew on a stick. And there's nothing wrong with that.
it's like it's so it brings me joy to see him having fun like that and it causes me to just slow down a little bit and just enjoy being outside the birds are always going crazy in the morning and just to pay attention to that and just to be present in that moment so um that has just become so enjoyable that the short leash walks are becoming more occasional and these long leash walks are more the norm as much as i do teach teach the loose leash walking on shorter leash um he just really likes it so now uh interestingly enough we are where we're at in wisconsin is a little bit more city-ish um it's not like a subdivision and with sidewalks and a bit more traffic i guess but so what the point is about that i have a 15 foot leash but he doesn't have to have all 15 feet all the time so most of the time i've kind of got it like this and then he wants to go sniff the fire hydrant I just let it out. Another dog comes walking up. I don't know that dog. I bring it in a little bit more. And you can do that. So you have the freedom to do make it however long you want. On our long leash walks, um, we just kind of, I really pretty much let Rory direct those walks. However, saying that, I am not willing to go backwards with all of the training that we did I still want him to value walking with me so I don't do the I don't have my treat pouch on I don't have my clicker but I do always have treats on me and I want to reward him whenever he looks at me checks in with me comes back to my side I really don't want him to think he's just out on this walk forget about forget about walking with me um, and so I reinforce that. It's like just what we want to see more of, we reinforce, right? So every time he, so often, you know, he'll be sniffing and stuff, but he'll check in with me. I just say, yes, we're good. And I give him a treat. And so he does more of that then. He checks in with me often. Even like here, near, I don't know if you notice on the deck, um, doing that, he, anyway, Rory just does check in with me often because I he often gets reinforced for that not every single time but um, I do because I want to see more of that and so also he's not pulling me on this 15, 15 foot leash if he takes all 15 foot leash and decides to pull me um, we stop so we don't just start allowing poor leash manners just because he has more length of the leash um, and it's just been going really well and we have both just really been enjoying these walks so you could do just like throw in a couple of long leash walks during the week and if you're not in a place you know if you're in a city there's lots of people and other dogs maybe that doesn't work but if you could ever get to have access to some kind of a trail or just a more natural setting that's not a city setting just try it just get on the long leash Again, reward your dog when he's doing well, when he's doing well, acknowledging you. Um, that's what I mean, coming back to you, looking at you, um, checking in with you in any way. Um, reward that, just have some treats, get used to having some treats with you. The sniffing part, just to allow your dog to sniff. Um, it is it like with this kind of walk, you're probably gonna cover less territory. And if you still feel like, like if your dog has a 20 or 30 minute walk, Rory can do like a 20 or 30 minute walk now. He's six months old. And so if it seems like it's 20 minutes of just a lot of stopping and him sniffing and I still want some more exercise, I can go for another walk by myself. I, later in the day, I can do a workout. Um, there are just lots of other ways to get that exercise in. What can make up for what seems like your dog just isn't walking that much, he's not running, he's not getting as physically tired by just stopping doing stopping all the sniffing let me tell you the sniffing is okay our dogs have 50 times the what is it the sense receptors uh, than what we humans have it's amazing if you really think about it they just don't have a heightened sense of smell it's just there's so much more going on when they smell that mailbox or the grass or the fire hydrant the tree trunk um, and so while they're sniffing, their brain, they're using serious brain power. 
to process all of these smells that, you know, like what maybe that dog that peed before them had for lunch yesterday. Is that dog neutered? Are they healthy? Um, all this stuff. I don't know exactly, but there's just a lot of information. So while their brain is processing all of this information that's very valuable to them, we might not care about it. Um, it tires them out in a really good way, it tires them out mentally, it helps them to use their brain in ways that like we promote using en enrichment activities like you, like a food puzzle where they have to use some problem solving, they have to figure something out. Um, but this is like a God-given enrichment <laughs> way. It's, a, it's a, an innate desire that they have to sniff. And we allow them to do that just by allowing them to satisfy that your dog is just going to be more satisfied, tired out. It doesn't matter if it's not an hour long power walk. So I would encourage you to just try it. It's a, it's a different way. It doesn't mean you have to only do this about the sniffing. Someone shared this analogy with me recently and it just really clicked with me and it was helpful and I, maybe you would find it helpful too. When we like we go on a regular walk and we think right, we got to get this done. If my dog is sitting there sniffing, we're never going to get going. Um, so we'll maybe let him sniff for a second and then come on, we're going. And you just keep doing that. Come on, we gotta go. Right? I've done it too. <laughs> Sometimes you do just have to go. Um, but when we do that and we never let our dogs just sniff until they're finished, um, let them satisfy that, that need to sniff. It's like if you were reading a children's book, a, a book to a child, you know, with the cool pictures and everything. And you know how they want to like look at the pictures, they want to point and maybe ask a question or um, just explore that. Nope, you just turn the page. You just keep reading. Nope, they want to, oh, they're pointing. To, nope, you just turn the page. Well, how frustrating would that be for the child? And so that I just thought that was a really helpful analogy. I think that's how our dogs can feel when we're like, oh, I just wanted nope. to summarize. Long leash walks, give it a try, like a 15 foot plain old leash wherever you feel comfortable having your dog on a longer leash. Um, give yourself a break, give your dog a break. Reward, have some treats with you. Reward anytime he checks in with you, um, comes back to your side, just looks at you, and you wanna reward that. Don't just let your dog pull everywhere. If he's pulling you, you just stop, maybe switch directions, right? But it's just kind of relaxing. Let your dog just sniff to his heart's content if you have the time to do that. Sometimes you can say, okay, let's go. You know, you sniff for a while, you can move on, he can sniff another spot. Um, but just just enjoy those longer leash walks. And just a reminder that I'm not talking about a retractable leash, just a 15 foot long plain old leash. So anyway, that's about it. I'm sorry we got cut off twice, but thank you so much for joining me. It's so good to be here with my Wisconsin peeps and wherever you're watching from. I hope you have a wonderful day and we will see you here back next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs> you ready to go? Let's go. My name is Gina Zwig. I'm a professional dog trainer and owner at Positive Life Dog Training. It is my joy and passion to share with you the wonders of positive reinforcement training and to promote the positive treatment of the most amazing creatures on the planet, our beloved dogs. In my video blog, I share dog training tips, recommendations, lots of free resources, and training demos all to help you and your dog live your most positive lives together. If you're a dog parent or caregiver, and like me, you also like the idea of making our dog's lives continually better, then you're in the right place, my friend. Be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. And thanks so much for watching, my friend. Be sure to scroll down in the description to grab any links to resources I've included in this post. I hope to see you next week.